Hi, peeps. Um, I'm done with the episode of Genesis Apologetics that I was doing, so I'm going to move on from Biddle and do Eric Hovind, who runs Creation Today. In case you don't know, he's the son of Kent Hovind. Yes, that Kent Hovind, the one who swears he isn't a fraud, but spent 10 to 15 years in prison because he defrauded the IRS, and then he went back to jail for beating his wife. Yeah, charming, huh? Anyway, I'm going to take it a bit easier on Eric, because, I mean, really, this guy never really had a chance, although he should have learned by now, you know? But, uh, yeah, he went to Pensacola Christian Academy for his entire life. Other than that, he has no other credentials, if you can call that a credential. Anyway, um, he did try going to Jackson Hole Bible College, which isn't even a real college, but that's neither here nor there, and he couldn't even do that. So, I don't want to air the Hovind's dirty laundry, but it ties into who he is. When Kent went to prison to serve out his sentence for dodging the IRS, he put his creationism ministry in Eric's name, and Eric never gave it back. Well, you know what, Kent? Karma's a bitch, ain't she? Maybe if he'd been nicer to the kid, he would have given you back your ministry, but you beat the living daylights out of that kid when he was younger. What did you think was going to happen, you loser? And while you're thinking about it, if you're new, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you've already subscribed to me, make sure you're still subscribed. Because for some reason, YouTube loves to unsubscribe people. Also, if you're new here, I'd like to thank you very much uh, for giving me a chance. And for my fans and subscribers, thank you so much for coming back. You are the lifeblood of this channel. And now, with that, let's get on with the video. Ladies and gentlemen, what is the most important, the only, the linchpin event that guarantees salvation? There is no Lent pen event because, number one, the crucifixion as described by the Bible never happened. Yes, there were people crucified by the Romans. Second, there was no resurrection, which I can't even imagine you believe. Also, I gotta ask, saved from what? I know you're gonna say saved from sin, of course. But what is sin? It's just some wishy-washy bullshit. That's what it is. And it's a guilt trip to get your sheeple to stay in line and keep giving you money. Also, do you really think that threatening people with hell, which doesn't exist, by the way, is really the way to go? I mean, really. People are waking up which is why they're leaving the church. It has nothing to do with evolution or anything like that. Well, according to the Apostle Paul, if Christ be not risen, your faith is in vain. You are in your sins. We of all men are most miserable. Our preaching is empty. Our faith is empty. We are false witnesses. We are still in our sins. The
So your argument is Paul said this. Well, first of all, I call that Pollyanity, not Christianity, because you are taking the words of Paul above the words of Jesus. And second, you can't prove Jesus rose from the dead to begin with because, quite frankly, it never happened and it never can happen. No one can come back from the dead. Period. Okay? All right. Um, and just as your book says it doesn't mean it's true. As for your point about sin, there is no sin. So get off your high horse about it because there is no goddamn sin, you fucking moron. And as for the dead still being dead, yes, the dead are still dead. And that's going to be true no matter if you like it. Just because you and your little minions don't want to accept reality, close your eyes and ears and go la 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 and prefer to believe in a pretend world does not mean that pretend world is true. Wake up and smell the coffee. Oh, and this is a throwaway observation, but I can't not mention it, can I? Is that the Twilight Zone playing in the background? Very appropriate, since you and your followers live in the Twilight Zone. Kudos to you. Dead are gone. We, we are the most pitiful. That is the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Listen, I really believe that this conversation will help you experience true meaning and true purpose in your life. <laughs> you serious? Nah, Eric. I think it was mistranslated. Either that or Paul used the wrong word, which could very well be. Noah, Eric, you are not the most pitiable. You are the most pitiful. Get that straight. Because guess what, Eric? Only pitiful people have to live in a pretend world. Only pitiful people have to make up lies to tell themselves. Only pitiful people do that. When this life is over, we tend to think that, oh, for eternity, we're going to be like these spirit being sort of like angels dwelling in the on the clouds no that's not what the bible teaches we get physical resurrected glorified bodies like jesus had you know it's really strange that you, of all people, should bring up what the Bible teaches, considering you don't give a fuck what the Bible teaches. You have your preconceived notions, and you put them on the Bible, and you then choose which verses fit that preconceived notion without giving a fuck of the um underlying context of the verse by the way that's called eisegesis and that is not the way any of this shit should be read you know i would say citation fucking needed for this you know we're gonna have glorified bodies and we're gonna be living in a new heaven and a new earth but i know this is all predicated on the bible is true so forget that all right so let's go with it you said that many people think of eternity as you know singing a song over and over and over again for you know ever and ever and ever and that's not what the bible teaches but you don't exactly tell us what the bible teaches that's strange oh wait a minute 
Uh, silly me. No, it's not strange at all that you don't mention what the Bible teaches, because it doesn't teach anything in regard to this. I personally don't want to live forever. So, what do you say about that? And we're going to be dwelling in the new heavens and the new earth, specifically the new Jerusalem. It's not a ethereal, you know, spiritual existence that like, sometimes the way people describe it sounds really boring. You still haven't bothered to give us a clear picture of what you think heaven is. I mean, I understand that you believe you can't really put it into words, but what do you think? You haven't even done that. How are we supposed to believe you? And then there's my argument of, I don't really give a fuck what you think people are going to be doing in heaven, because I don't want to live forever. Have you ever thought about forever and ever and ever? It'd be boring. You clearly haven't thought this through. You say that you offer this gift of eternal life, which, by the way, I don't believe in. Thank goodness. But you say you offer this gift, but then you don't say anything more about it. That's odd. Well, why would that be good for an evangelist? Hey, you know, get saved and you can have eternity. That sounds kind of boring. No, it's not yeah. going to be boring. Not only eternity, eternity yeah. going, singing a song with, you know, instead of just, you know, repeating the chorus 20 times, we're going to repeat it forever. That's what some people think of when they think of uh, yeah. eternity. And that's not what it is. It's so, okay. Again, you tell us what this quote unquote eternity is not when are you going to get to the point where you tell us where eternity is and more importantly why should we want this eternity for ourselves do you really think that you're going to persuade non-christians with this bullshit line of what you call reasoning which isn't reasoning at all we need a reason god damn it give it to us i should also add that you are putting the cart way before the horse there is no fucking way you can talk about eternity without first convincing people of a god and even then your job isn't done because not only do you have to prove to people that there is a God, which you can't do, you have to prove that it is your douchebag of a God. It's so much more than that. And um, the, the Bible describes that. And, and when we don't talk about resurrection, we don't talk about Christ's resurrection or what that means for our own future resurrection, we get a wrong view of, of eternity as well. So, so your argument is, unless Christians put the resurrection in the gospel, they're not going to have any idea of what eternity is. I thought the gospel was all about resurrection. But anyway, moving on. And the eternity they imagine isn't eternity as portrayed in the Bible. Well, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I don't really think the Bible says what eternity is going to be. Not that I believe eternity crap. So let's just go over what you just said. You just said that eternity isn't what people think it's going to be, but you never give any clue of what it is going to be. And as far as I know, neither does the Bible. Yeah, sounds like an apologist. So it's not only do we present a wrong view of the gospel message, it's, it's like an incomplete gospel message. We also have an incomplete uh, eschatology too. 
Well, I got uh, I got about 10 minutes left with our uh, friends that are on Facebook and on YouTube and our podcast and television show. Can we jump into, I, we, we would agree the Bible is the best evidence for the resurrection of Christ. It the Bible is evidence of nothing. Zip, zero, nada. And it's not just because it's the Bible. Written records, in particular, are not evidence. You have to have hard facts to back them up. So let's look at the physical facts, shall we? Well, first of all, even though a lot of scholars are not mythicists, we really have no idea whether Jesus really existed or not. And we don't even have an empty tomb. And if you even mention the Shroud of Turin, I'm going to blow my load. That is a bunch of crap. It's been debunked time and time again, and yet people think it's a fact. Okay, most people don't. I will say that. Most Christians are smart enough not to fall for the Shroud of Turin. But there are a few that do, and it really gets my goat when people bring up the Shroud of Turin. It's been debunked. Move on. So what other hard facts do we have? Well, the Romans did crucify people. In fact, they crucified a lot of people. That doesn't get us anywhere. That gets us to Rome crucified people who wanted to rise up against the empire. I can't think of any other hard facts. Um, maybe my audience can, but I can't. Anyway, moving on talks about it the apostles talk about it you can't go through the scripture without the old testament pointing towards what was going to happen to christ and then the new testament talking about what happened to christ Tanakh does not point to Jesus. Tanakh points to Messiah. And by the way, there's more than just one Messiah, FYI. But anyway, um, yeah, um, Jesus was made to retroactively fit prophecies of the Old Testament. Prophecies, I might add, that were mistranslated in the Septuagint, and you can see that it really doesn't pass muster. Right now on Sundays in Atheist Church, I am covering um, a Jewish rabbi. He is great. He runs Jews for Judaism, and I would highly suggest you check them out if you would like to know how Christians have changed Tanakh to suit their own purposes. His name is Rabbi Tobias Singer. His channel is Tobias Singer, and he is a great way to learn about how Christians twisted Torah. But some people go, well, I don't believe the Bible. Now, I think there's a whole argument that can be made on why this is the best evidence and why this is our authority and why this is revelation from God. But today's conversation, Tim, you've gone through and researched a lot of really extra biblical evidence 
for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I want to jump into some of that. I think you misspoke, Eric. So, you know, let me correct you because I'm such a nice person. Not just some people say, well, I don't believe the Bible. A lot of people say they don't believe the Bible. And there are more joining us every day. And do you know why that is? It's not because Satan's got a hold of the heart of these people. Because, honestly, Satan does not exist. Not the way you portray him. So, what else can we say? Well, the Bible is historically and scientifically inaccurate. And more people are waking up. So, I've got to just say something right here. We are now passing the 22 minute mark in a 39 minute program by Eric and his yes man. And we're just now getting into extra biblical evidence. Now, obviously, there is no extra biblical evidence for the resurrection because it never happened, nor could it ever happen. Um, the most I can say is he wasn't really dead when he put him in the tomb. And of course, I don't believe that because I don't believe that the Jesus as portrayed in the Bible truly existed. Now, there is another hump that you have to cross with me, and that is that I do have some archaeology classes behind me. And I know without a doubt, and if you don't believe me, you can look it up. It's on the internet, freely available, that the Romans would never allow a crucified man to have a respectful burial. Congratulations. You have invented a new kind of stupid, a damage you can never undo kind of stupid, and open all the cages in the zoo kind of stupid. Truly, you didn't think this through kind of stupid. Let's re Yes, folks, this extra biblical evidence, which is a crock of shit, is so impressive that it takes 17 of 39 minutes. And I'm not going to cover it until next time. So you'll have to come back. That's where I'm going to leave it for today. We will find out what this impressive extra biblical evidence of the resurrection is next time. And it will be next time because I'm not taking a break with this. Because next is the last. No, I'm not leaving Eric. I have a lot more to say about this guy, but it will be the end of the episode. I mean, come on, 17 minutes. I can tear that to shreds. So anyway, until next time, goodbye. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. It really helps me out. And if you really want to go that extra step and you are financially able, you can make a monthly donation via membership for 99 cents a month. You can also do a PayPal.